What's up guys, it's Seth and I'm bringing you another video. Now this one's going to be kind of a tutorial slash how to video on how to build a PC for under a thousand dollars. This is not going to be a like hands on showing you how to actually put together the PC but more choosing the parts because in my opinion choosing the parts for my build was more stressful and annoying and difficult than actually putting the thing together. So I'm going to do one of these for each price range, like under a thousand, under fifteen hundred, under two thousand, and then premium builds for under three thousand. Probably gonna do one of those each month and show you what you can achieve in performance by spending in your different uh, price ranges. Because this is this under one thousand dollar build is probably gonna be for beginners, in my opinion, because it will give you great performance. A thousand dollars is more than enough money to give you good performance in the the system, uh, especially in games and stuff. I personally have an under one thousand dollar gaming PC, and I run a lot of games at max with no frame rate issues at all, and it can multitask like crazy. Video encoding, all that is great. So under a thousand dollars is definitely not. You're not going cheap. Uh, under five hundred dollars, now that's cheap. That's when you're. You're really sacrificing a whole lot just to call it a gaming PC because you have, say, uh, one discrete graphics card in it, and it's one of the like worst ones you can get. But because it's a gaming graphics card, you can call it a graphic uh, a gaming PC. That's not what under a thousand dollar build gives you. Uh, but I don't want to ramble on for too long, so let's get right into it. All of these parts are coming from Newegg, and just so you guys know, there's more than one place that you can get parts. Newegg, in my opinion, especially if you're in the U in the U.S., is the best place to get PC parts. Other places, like if you uh, if you live in Canada, NCIX definitely the place to go. If you live in either Canada or really anywhere, uh, and you're trying to build a PC, then Amazon is also a good place. Uh, they have most of these parts, uh, pretty good prices. Newegg, in my opinion, is just the easiest. You get yourself really quick. They have great customer service. Any part you can possibly think of, you'll find. Uh, also, the other alter alternative for some parts is to go to your local computer hardware store. And not I don't mean a Best Buy, I mean like a dedicated computer hardware parts store uh, for processes and things like that. Best Buy, not the place to go. If you think you can get the stuff there, don't. And the things that you will get there, you're not going to have it as many options and it's not going to be as good. So we're on Newegg and we're starting clean. This is going to be for under a thousand dollars and so let's get started. The first thing of course for any PC you want to choose your CPU. We're going to go pretty good and go for the 2500K. It's an i5 processor. It's from Sandy Bridge which is the previous generation but believe me previous generation does not mean a thing with the 2500K. It will give you great performance and everything you will really enjoy with this. Uh, next thing is the case. I'll do the motherboard right after that. The case, you don't need to spend a $300 on a case. Some people think that just because, uh, say, the inside of the case is not brushed black metal and does not look good, it does not have a bunch of fans pre-built in it and LED lights and stuff, it's not good. That's not the case. For under $100, you can easily find a good case, and this one's actually only $60 and has been voted one of the best cases you can find. So it's the Cooler Master HAF912. See, uh, right there. 2011 Reader Choice Award Best Chases. That means that between the, perfor the performance, the ease of use, and the price, it is one of the best PC cases you can buy. And you can see 960 reviews and five stars. So I'm going to use that as our case. On to the motherboard. We're going to go with an ASRock Z77 board. That's all you have to type in. It should be one of the first ones. 100 to 200. This looks like the right one. So for the full name, again, I don't know if I've said it yet, but all of these uh, these parts with the links to the um, the actual new egg pages and stuff will be in the description if you don't want to go on and look at it uh, look it up while I'm doing uh, the video so here you go it's the ASRock Z77 Pro 4 LGA 1155 the 
one of the most important things is you can choose something else uh, if you want to spend a little bit more, spend a little bit less on these things. But with the motherboard, you have to look at the where is it? The supported CPU area and the CPU socket type on your CPU on the CPU page. If you go under details, it'll tell you the socket type. Most Intel ones will be 11 uh, LJ 1155. Some will be 2011 if you're going for a higher end processor. Some will be various other things. 1155 is generally what you need. But if say you have a um, Intel 3930K and it's a LJ 2011, it's not going to work on this board. It has to fit in the LJ 1155 socket. So one motherboard can only work with one type of CPU. So we're going to go with this one. Again, all links will be in the description. Going on from that, hmm, what should we do? Um, actually, since we just did the, uh, the CPU and motherboard, let's go for the CPU cooler. Now, CPU coolers, if you're overclocking, which you can with a 2500K, and you can actually overclock very well. And unfortunately, this is, this is not something I did with my computer. I'm actually using the stock CPU cooler. Don't do that. This one, uh, it's a Corsair liquid cooled, so really good performance. H80. There's an H80 and H100 with the case that we're choosing. You have to go with the H80 because what you do is you hook uh, this part right here onto the 120 millimeter fan slot in the back of the PC and take out that fan. It's a very simple process, only four screws to deal with. And then everything is pre put together. The liquid is already in it, the radiator is right here. And this part here, there's tutorials, you can look them up and I'll actually have a link to the tutorial in the description. But this part then just hooks right onto the PC, not the PC, the CPU with a back plate on the back of the motherboard. It's a very simple thing and there's little to really no maintenance required at all. So we're gonna use that. Air coolers, some of them work as good but they're louder and generally liquid cooled is the way to go. And I'm really, personally, a really uh, big, I don't even know what the word is, but I suggest using liquid cooled compared to air cooled just because it looks better, sounds better, works better, all that stuff. Is more expensive sometimes, but it will work in this build. Next, let's go into the RAM to finish up what will be on the motherboard itself. We're going to go with G scale, 8 gigabytes, almost no game or anything will require using um, here we go will require using more than four gigs but if you want to do multitasking at the same time and you want to be kind of future proofing your PC then go for eight gigs at least 60 bucks not too bad and is really one of the best brands when you're looking for RAM in general is G skill next let's see okay so power supply 600 watts that's what we're going to go with you can give yourself a little bit extra room to deal with but for these components 600 watts will be more than okay so we're going to go with the OCZ Pro 600 watt power supply here you go as you can see 50 bucks after mail-in rebate don't be afraid of mail-in rebates they're great 99% of the time when you get them you send them in you're going to get your money it's not that big of a hassle Generally, all you have to do is on the box, which shows you the the uh, like the serial code. You have to cut that part out, uh, write in your information, and then just mail it to them. Very simple, not a big deal. So don't be afraid of those mail-in rebates. And Newegg, of all places, one of the best places to get cheaper prices because there are mail-in rebates. So 600 watt power supply, pretty good ratings as well. 801 reviews, four four stars. Sorry about that, mail. Uh, so there we go. Graphics card, duh. I was saying that we we're all done with motherboard components. We're not. Video card. Don't need to type in video card. 6870. That's all you need to type in. And it'll actually be the first one. 150 after mail and rebate. And really, it's one of the best video cards you can get. It's from the previous AMD series for motherboards. Uh, the Radeon HD series, I should say. And go with the xfx one it says free dirt 3 game coupon i've heard mixed reviews about whether or not that game coupon actually works or you can even find it 
So don't base your decision off of those free game coupons and add-ons that they send with it because sometimes they might not work and uh, just stay away from basing any decision off of those those game cu coupons. If one uh, if something costs say a little bit less but does include game game coupon and has better reviews, go with that and don't like I said base your decision off the six uh, off of what is supposedly included with it. That's about it. We still need to do, of course, Windows. Actually, let's do the hard drive first. We're going to go with a one terabyte hard drive. And we're not skimping at all on this because we're going to go with the Caviar Black. It's $110, but you will not be disappointed. Caviar Black, because we're not including the SSD right now with the, uh, with the computer in order to make it work with uh, under a thousand dollars going with a caviar black it's the fastest you can get on and really the most reliable you can get for a internal regular HDD after that that's about it all we need is the optical drive and the windows of course windows 7 OEM if you are seeing this video, say you're looking at it, actually it wouldn't be that far out. I was going to say go for Windows 8 if it's out by then, but that's going to be so far from now that don't even bother with it. As you can see, we're over $1,000. Don't worry about that. The mail-in rebates will bring it down to where it needs to be. Optical drive, that is the last component for this PC. Go with, we don't need Blu-ray. Most people aren't using the Blu-ray tons. If you are, you can splurge and spend 50 bucks more and get it. We're not gonna include it for the base components of this. Uh, not that one, not that one. Where is it? Here we go. Light on, DVD burner, and really one of the best ones you can get. Myself, I have a Samsung one. It costs the same. Don't, don't. I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever one you want, if you like Samsung more and you'd rather go with a brand that's more well-known, go with that. And light on, honestly, in my opinion, is fine. So we're going to add that to the cart. Comes out to a total of $1,027.90. Though that's before shipping. After shipping, $1,040.53. But see, $15 mail-in rebate, $25, $25. That brings it down... A total of sixty-five dollars, sixty-five from one thousand uh, forty. It's nine hundred eighty bucks, under thousand dollars. And look at all the great stuff you can get. And this includes uh, Windows Seven. Some of you might have that at home, so you can take that out. Maybe add an SSD. That would be my first suggestion: is adding in an SSD, or maybe upgrading the case to more, say. A thousand dollar range, thousand uh, dollar. That would be a very impressive case. Hundred dollar range case, but other than that, most of the stuff is fine. There's a lot of things you can upgrade a little bit if you have more room. Say a Blu-ray burner, uh, DVD burner, I should say. Uh, SSD, adding that, or oh, one thing I forgot to mention, as I'm looking at it, the power supply with the 600 watt one. It's one of the best you can get because, for the price at least. 600 watts, more than enough power, but also it is modular. I need to check and see if it's completely modular or not. Be able to tell from the pictures. Okay, so this is how a lot of them, a lot of the manufacturers and stuff do it. It's semi-modular. They say modular. It's not, but the only thing that is included on the, you can't take it off, I should say, on the power supply is the 24-pin power connector for the motherboard. And then, generally, the only other thing, yeah, the only thing is the supplemental CPU power supply. And so there's only two cords that you really have to deal with. Not a big deal. Other than that, that's about it. So I'll have links to all of these in the description. And this is the July version, obviously. But it's close to the end of the July. And I'll be putting up probably another one of these for a different price range under, say, $1,500 in the next couple of days so stay tuned for that and please like and subscribe as well as check out tgbuzz.com as that is my website and have a good day